Yo, yo, what up? It's your boy Neo coming to you from my reality TV, life from my point of view. Just wanted to give an, a new slider insight. This time, I wanted to speak about the running. So, for this slider insight video, I will be covering run blocking and fumbles and a little bit of tackling, but definitely run blocking and fumbles. So, in this play, uh, the computer is controlling the Giants and I was testing things because I had to lower I lowered the fumbles I think it was a little bit too high where I had it I think originally I had it at like 90 um, for all pro and I believe about 78 for all Madden and I had to lower it because what was happening was the computer was breaking an absurd amount of tackles sometimes and it would it would just happen in certain moments. It wouldn't happen consistently. But for certain moments, it would break a lot of tackles. So what I had to do was I had to lower it. But in lowering it, as I said before, fumbles, for some reason, seem to do a lot for the ball carrier abilities. So if I, I figured if I lowered it too low, that the guys wouldn't make the cuts, jukes, spins, things like that. So I didn't want to lower it too too low, but I know it needed to be lowered. And then to counter that, I had to lower it, but then I had to raise tackling and things like that. So either way, I lowered it. So when I lowered it, I went and did some testing in the lab. And this run in particular came across and I, I really liked it. So first, I'm going to let the run, I'm going to let it play. And then I'm going to break down a few of the things that I liked about it and why and how I believe the sliders affected it. So here goes. All right, so you get Barkley. He's running to the outside. And he cuts back up inside. Now we're going to stop it there. If you notice, this blocker and this blocker, I think that's Ingram, and I'm not sure who that is. They get out in front, make their blocks. And then Barkley... Sometimes under normal circumstances, they may run that way. But he decides to run this way to follow his fullback, which I'm perfectly fine with. And in doing that, <clears throat> let's run it back again. Keep an eye on 85. Keep an eye on Evan Ingram, 88. They go out, they make the two lead blocks. Good blocking, right? That's run blocking. Not too high, not too low. So they managed to go out and do what they needed to do. Didn't hold the blocks or anything like that. Barkley, being a good <clears throat> a good running back, can break a lot of tackles. So you have to tackle him. You have to wrap him up. So the Rams weren't able to do that. So he was able to get a lot of extra yards because of that. Now, <clears throat> another thing to keep an eye on is watch the vision of the CPU. Sometimes the CPU will run to defenders they're like they'll run straight at a guy they won't run to the open spot on the field and i think they do that a lot of times because of the way the run blocking is set they're looking for a blocker and if run blocking is set too high they will just do whatever they can to find a blocker even if a blocker is on the other side of the field they will change course and they will try to run to the other side of the field instead of running towards the end zone, towards the open space that they have in front of them. So you have to get, get that run blocking down packed so that that won't happen. Um, also, with Barkley, what he did was he he ran out, ran in, ran back out. And that's something that you don't see a lot with the computer. Um, you'll see that with the, with the better running backs, Saquon Barkley, the uh, <clears throat> Ezekiel Elliott, Todd Gurley's they will they will make that kind of move and they will make that kind of cut most running backs should do that anyway because it's the logical thing to do but you know sometimes you'll see it sometimes you won't but again keep an eye on 88 and 85 go out and make their lead blocks and the fullback he goes out and makes a block now sometimes you'll notice that your fullback will kind of do nothing like he'll go he'll block nobody he'll just run into like empty space sometimes so I thought that was a good thing Even a, even a block there on the outside guy. And then, like I said, then you leave it to Barkley 
to shake and bake, make some moves. And like I said, and this is the computer running. This isn't me. I, I'm contr I have the Rams on defense. All right. So on this part, we're going to keep an eye on the fullback who is here. We're going to keep an eye on him. Now, he has two options. He can block this guy. He can block this guy. He chooses to block him, which I'm perfectly fine with. Either either one I would have been okay with. Either block he makes, I would be perfectly fine with. If he blocks this guy, then I have more of a, then not me, but the computer has more of a path to go here and up to the end zone. He chooses to block him, which then leaves Saquon one-on-one -on -one with him. Now let's watch that. Watch how it plays out. Now also, under some circumstances, what would happen in the past would be that the computer runner would definitely try his best to follow the fullback and then run this way because that's where the block is. That's where the lead block is going. So that's what he would do. But in this instance, the block is made. And he chooses to run this way, get into the one-on-one -on -one matchup with this guy and allowed him to use his moves and his skills to break the tackles, to make the juke and things like that. And that's what I liked. That's what I liked about this, this play because it highlights so many different aspects of the slider set and the way I have it set. And it shows that even with the lower fumbles that the computer is still going to make good running decisions. He's still going to, it's still going to, be able to make jukes and cuts and things of that nature and that's what i wanted that's what i wanted the whole time and that was the main concern so knowing that that worked out that way i was very happy and pleased to see this because again there's a there's a broken tackle there's a broken tackle and that comes from the running back ability also with the tackling set a certain way now he's broke these tackles but that, that won't always happen now let's pause it again real quick while it's here now see see all of this space here a lot of times the computer used to try to run here. This is where he would try to run because you have a blocker here. These guys are already blocked. He wants to avoid this guy. But now with the way things are set, when you have the blocker, even though he makes the block, he still cuts it back out to the outside to get himself into a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And that is what I like. That was very good right there. And, um, and as I said, with with the lowering of everything, it still managed to keep keep everything running well. And that is what I wanted. You'll still get fumbles. The com computer, as well as the, the um, player, will still fumble the ball. Also, which was a good thing with lowering it because I didn't see a lot of fumbles. And I don't think that there should be a ton of fumbles anyway. But I was able to get it to the point where big hitters and things like that and guys that are a little looser with the ball, they will fumble. So be careful. But I just wanted to give a little slider insight to the run blocking and the fumbles and how they are affecting the running. And as you can see, the CPU running backs are making good decisions. They are making, the ball carrier is making um, moves to get away from defenders, to avoid defenders, not running into defenders. Because if fumbles are set too low, what will happen is that the cpu ball carrier will just run to contact they'll run to contact and they'll brace they won't try to make a move because they don't want to fumble because of the fumbling lower they'll, it's a higher chance a higher probability that they'll fumble so they'll just try to brace for the hit or they will they will tend to take this route and run to the outside they'll come this way they'll take this route run to the outside to stay close to the sidelines so that if they fumble they have the sideline there as protection so those are just a few things to just know sometimes about the sliders and how they are and how they react. If you raise it to, like I said, like I had it like 90, there won't be much chance for a fumble. They'll do more juking. They'll do more ball carrier moves. But then you sacrifice the fumbling aspect where they will still fumble, but it'll be very, very difficult to make them fumble sometimes. Um, so you have to get it. You have to find that perfect balance, which, as I say all the time with the sliders, it's all about balance. So you find that perfect balance and then, you know, you make it you take it from there. 
and that's where we're at. So just wanted to share that. Any other questions or concerns you guys have about the sliders, please be sure to leave me feedback and let me know. Um, I will keep the slider insight videos coming. I have a few more that I'm working on and I hope you all are enjoying my little telestrator here. I, uh, <laughs> try to do something a little different with my, uh, with my, um, <laughs> with my slider insights videos. So I've been, uh, I was like, let me, uh, let me do something creative and make a little telestrator or something just to, you know, just to spice it up a little bit. So I hope everybody's digging that, but that's it, man. That's my slider insight for running backs and ball carryability as far as fumbles, run blacking, and tackling is concerned. All right. It's your boy Neo signing off. Peace.